difficulties. It's Chase Hunter, IUS Boxy Chair, uh, and we're going to go over some of the key points from the uh, District Tournament Host Operations Manual. Uh, I'm not going to go through every single portion of this, but uh, we'll do the key points, uh, and then I'll unmute everyone when we finish uh, to take any kind of questions. Uh, I am recording this, and I will um, be posting the video for this um, this evening and or or first thing tomorrow morning. Um, so don't want to burn any more time. Let's get rolling. All right, you have your table of contents page there. Uh, some introductory information here. Uh, a couple key positions um, for our tournament is that you have your tournament uh, director um, who, you know, basically is going to be running the show. Um, and then you also have uh, your assistant tournament directors. Um, you can have two of these guys. And then um, with that, uh, you can, uh, each one of them, I believe, let's see if I can find the information on here. Maybe I didn't scroll down far enough. I believe there's a $75 stipend that are attached to those positions for those who help in running the tournament. Okay, cool. All right, sorry, I was just checking some things on my end to make sure that we're still up and running. All right. Um, sorry, having another difficult to hear. All right, my apologies. Uh, this system is hacking up here again. Let's try this again. Oh, there we go. Okay, I have control over this now. Perfect. All right. Uh, going down to our next page here, um, we have our Special Olympics mission and philosophy in uh, Maryland's vision along with the Special Olympic Maryland values. I will let you guys review that at your leisure. Our Special Olympic athletes vote, let me win, but if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. Page four has our contact information. Um, so we have our district representative contact emails here, um, and then also my contact email and phone number and Kara's contact email and phone number are here as well. Um, section one ceremony. So your opening ceremony will set the tone for your entire day. So this, this portion of your day is your most high energy, uh, portion to get all of our athletes, coaches, and staff excited uh, about the games to come. Um, so you definitely want to be sure you pick someone to be your master, uh, or mistress of ceremonies, um, who can bring that energy and bring that spirit we're looking for in the games. Okay. Um, after uh, following this page here, we have um, our scripts. So you want to be sure you enter your proper district number into the script. Um, for roles, um, you know, you have people who will do the national anthem, um, color guard if you have that, um, your athlete unified partner oath, your officials oath, and coaches oath. So you want to be sure that you find people uh, to fill the roles to reading that. Um, following your identifying uh, roles chart. Um, we have a script here. Uh, we offer this script, you know, this is not the mandate, um, but it's a nice guideline to follow um, in order for you guys to have a nice proper ceremony. Um, so that goes on. Uh, for your schools and mascots here, you wanna list, list your team and uh, your schools and mascots uh, and allow a little time in between saying each one to uh, give, you know, 
the school's chance to, to cheer uh, for themselves and for each other. Uh, going forward, I mean, this is your script here. We'll kind of go through that. Um, here are your different oaths. Um, be sure you fill in your district numbers here for your officials oath. Um, and then for your opening game statement, you want to fill in your district number. Okay. Um, award ceremonies. Each athlete unified partner who competes will receive an award. Medals are awarded for first through third place, gold, silver, and bronze. All other places receive a ribbon. Coaches do not receive awards. If a player is officially registered for the competition but was unable to compete because of injury or illness, he or she may receive an award for the place of finish for his or her team. No awards are given, they are earned. Um, all award ceremonies conducted during the games and tournaments shall have as their focus the dignity and accomplishment of participating student athletes and shall be conducted in a solemn and colorful manner that represent as much as reasonably practical the award ceremony is conducted during the Olympic competition. The Special Olympics awards protocol should be used as a guideline to properly plan and execute presentation. A student athlete who is disqualified or does not finish an event should be given a participation ribbon. Because these tournaments are unified competitions, unified medals and ribbons will be presented. Unified awards have the unified sports logo on them, which you can see below what I've read. All right. Your awards protocol, personnel must be in place and alert to setting up the table for the ceremony without undue delay. At least one six foot table should be used um, to hold your awards and should be properly draped with a Special Olympics Maryland tablecloth if possible. Um, you can prepare uh, awards trays for um, you know, each of the uh, different levels of rewards. Um, that'll be you know, at the discretion for you, but there's some guidelines here that, that uh, you know, are nice to follow. Um, as each team's place of finish is determined, the results will also be delivered to the awards preparation area to be posted and to the announcer. Uh, when possible, um, and this is a nice touch for your tournament, um, law enforcement or another honored guest VIP will present the awards. If a member of law enforcement is available, officers have priority because of the Special Olympics longstanding relationship with law enforcement worldwide. Uh, once presenters are in the preparation area, they will be briefed on the process of distributing awards. Uh, we'll explain the process to the presenter, including where in the processional he or she is going to be. Uh, if only one presenter, he or she will be behind the awards bearer in front of the processional. There are two presenters. One will be up front, things above. Second presenter will be in the rear of the processional after the athletes or, or athlete escort and in front of the second awards bearer if available. The presenter places the award around the neck of the student athlete then offers a handshake. If there is only one presenter, he or she should walk from one side of the stand to the other. The awards bearer will meet the presenter at the appropriate stand for the next award to be presented. If there are two presenters, he or she can alternate presenting awards. Uh, you want to set your teams up in a single file line, you know, uh, prior to them uh, getting their awards. Um, it'd be nice to have staff there to help escort them to make sure they know where they're going. Um, so that this uh, award ceremony looks uh, nice and neat uh, and official. Um, once your processional is ready, uh, you know, your Olympic fanfare music should signal when the athletes are to take their places to receive their awards. Uh, if at all possible, Special Olympics or Unified Sports banners should hang behind the awards area and or a scenic background. Um, by now, uh, reps should have been getting with Kara to see who needs a banner if they don't already have one. Um, student athletes need to be free within reason of jackets, headwear that is not team issues, street clothing, headset, radio, cell phones. Student athletes should remain in their uniforms and look presentable. Something just to keep in mind. Um, right here, you have your announcer script. Um, so be sure, you know, as you guys are getting your results, you can fill that in, um, to give to your presenters. Uh, 
Um, as you know, after you guys present uh, awards to the athletes, um, give them a little time to get some pictures taken, the wave, and celebrate their accomplishments. Uh, once time is given, you know, athletes should be let off um, and exit the area uh, after they receive their awards and uh, enjoy their time in the spotlight. Um, next page is, is our list of uh, schools and mascots for review 17 and 18. Uh, next section is tournament management. There's no charge to uh, for admission to unified events. Uh, we'd like you know we'd like to refrain from any kind of noise makers um, or electronic effects because uh, these can be distracting to our athletes and partners. Uh, national anthem should be played or sung during the opening ceremony. Um, color guards available, uh, they should be there to uh, present the colors. Uh, neutrality, if your school or if a school is hosting this event, um, this is not a home event for them. This is not an event put on by, you know, the school and the mascot. This is a Special Olympics event. Um, so neutrality is very, very important. Um, and there is to be no, like I said, home field uh, or presented by status for the hosting school. Uh, no alcohol, public beverage on site. Tobacco is strictly prohibited on all Maryland public school campuses. Uh, Americans with Disabilities Act went into effect on January 26, 1992. It requires that public establishments offer equal access and services to people who are physically and mentally disabled. Special Olympics Maryland will rely on the host to confirm compliance with the act by the host competition sites. Um, concessions can be available, but prices are not to be higher than similar events at the competition site. Um, and directional signs should be posted so participants and spectators know where they're going to access facilities, um, concessions, and so on. Um, competition management. As stated in the 2019 official rules and coaches resources, each school system is assigned a district. Each district receives an allocation of teams, gold medalists who will advance to the 2019 um, state high school championship uh, at Washington College. These allocations are proportionate to the total number of teams training statewide. Allocations will be distributed to each individual tournament director once they are determined. Uh, supplement A. Um, gives you some information for uh, coaches meetings. Um, so if we go to review that. Um, the playing roster must be consistent with the roster as it appears in the interscholastic bocce postseason registration. Um, however, scratches are permissible. Um, competition brackets. Each tournament is subject to a particular time restriction space restraint. Therefore, the tournament directors who are to work cooperatively with the bocce chair, that's me, to create competition brackets which best suit the time and space accommodation. Ideally, one bracket will be created for each gold medalist allocation. However, if a number of competing teams is too few to allow for viable competition using that format, the tournament director and unified bocce chair may determine an alternative advancement criteria. For example, allowing silver medalist to a silver medalist to advance, alternative advancement criteria must be approved by the, the unified bocce chair. So if there's anything, um, Kara sent out allocation um, for um, each of your district tournaments. Um, if there's anything that looks like it's going to be different as far as your brackets go, um, please let me know. Um, if you, you know, if you have a, a nice plan, uh, let's definitely take a look at it and just make sure everything is there and, and there's, you know, good, fair um, advancement uh, for players. Match results. It is preferred that a game is complete when either one teacher, one team reaches the winning point total of 16. Um, or the previously designated time has elapsed. However, due to time and space restrictions, the tournament director may choose to reduce the total of points or time limit. Um, each team shall play no less than two matches. So those two matches need to be sure to, to get in. Um, if, for overtime, the score remains tied in the regulation. The teams will continue to match. Play will continue until a winner is determined at the end of each complete frame. So you will complete, you know, as a, for a tie, you will complete the frame. Um, we, uh, gameplay will not stop once a point is scored. It's got to be completely at the end of the frame. Um, 
If a team has not earned the winning point total prior to expiration of regulation time, the tournament director or their designee or court official will announce last frame with one minute remaining in regulation or the expiration of time. Once the last frame has been announced, no additional frames will commence unless a tie occurs. At the discretion of the tournament director, he or she may add additional time to regulation, time allocation, if he or she believes the team is delaying the progress of a match. Um, integrity game, the athletes, unified partners, and coaches have trained and worked very hard for the players to have an opportunity to showcase their skills in this advanced competition. Every effort must be made to uphold the integrity of competition, including maintaining the rules. Tournament director, unified boxers shall thoroughly review the 2019 official rules and coaches' resources of interscholastic Interscholastic Unified Outdoor Bocce for a complete overview of the rules and protocols that will govern competition. Um, a control center area must be designated. Um, there's a table suggestion for this. Um, the location should serve as a team check-in, score reporting. The control center must have a public address system in order to make general announcements and to stage double teams prior to accessing the court. For results, tournament directors should determine an orderly and efficient way of receiving, tabulating, and posting match results, and overall scoring. Uh, you definitely want to be sure you retain all of those score sheets and brackets. Scratches need to be reported when the head coach checks in. If a player is absent, alternates are not allowed. The coach may substitute a, a player. However, the match will be considered an exhibition, and the opponent will receive credit for the victory. Protests. Any protest must be filed within 15 minutes of the completion Sorry, the completion of the match. Players or coaches can protest a misinterpretation of a rule, but not a judgment call. Protests are to be submitted in writing to the control tent. Okay, it's very important that we follow that 15-minute rule. A sports rule committee will review the protest on time and deliver a decision. A sports rules committee shall be determined prior to opening ceremonies and consists of two coaches and the tournament director or his or her designee. If possible, include one athlete and one unified partner. Parties are expected to recuse themselves if their affiliate school is involved in the protest or, or competition under protest. Host institutions are to abide by their athletics department medical coverage requirements. Um, for critical incident preparation, the host institution's procedures for circumstances requiring emergency evacuation of the competition site or interruption will be utilized. Tournament director and other host institution staff shall review these procedures and protocols prior to the tournament. Under threat of inclement weather, the decision to postpone the competition will occur at least five hours prior to the opening ceremony start time. Under the discretion of the tournament director and unified bocce chair, the decision may be made sooner. Tournament director and the unified boss share work together to properly communicate postponements via email. This includes communications regarding threats and postponements. Tournament director and the unified boss chair are highly encouraged to email all coaches at least one business day prior to competition to address the anticipated timeline of the event. If the weather is not looking great for your competition and you're looking to delay, please get a hold of me as soon as possible so I can, you know, help you guys with any kind of communication or any kind of judgment calls or anything. Uh, just get a hold of me. You guys have my email uh, and my number. Uh, if this does fall on a school day um, and you guys try to email or call, um, I will potentially be in class. So what I would highly suggest is that if you need to get a hold of me, uh, keep ringing my number because I will step out of what I'm doing to make sure you guys are good. Section five is a checklist um, for you uh, to review as far as, you know, what you would need for your district bocce tournament. Uh, I'm not going to go over this word for word. Um, a lot of this stuff we've already gone over uh, prior to this page. A um, couple things to think about here. Um, your officials, ideally you will identify independent, bocce knowledgeable people to serve as officials. However, if individuals are not available, coaches may serve as officials. Um, please see supplement A to train for training of bocce officials prior to competition. Uh, your post registration sheets will be your roster verification. Um, so be sure that you have these on site. Um, I'm currently reviewing these right now, I'm about halfway done doing them, um, just uh, for any kind of errors. And Kara will be uh, emailing you guys for any errors 
um, or emissions that we're finding. 20, page 25 uh, shows some court marking information for you. Um, one thing to notice on here is that uh, the triangles are your cones. Uh, it's very helpful uh, for your courts to have cones. Um, definitely helps our visually impaired athletes um, be able to see the different boundary lines. All right, supplement A, this is sort of a sample pregame timeline um, for you guys. Um, to use. Um, supplement B is your official quick reference guide for uh, the basics of bocce. Um, this is a good document to use uh, for training your officials uh, and what they should be looking for. I'm not going to go through this. We've gone through this information for the coach's guide. Um, supplement C is your score sheet here. Um, you guys should all be using the same type of score sheets um, for all your courts to help keep track. Um, please note coaches' signatures here and here, okay? And then you have to have your official sign it as well. Uh, just remember protests have to be 15 minutes before completion of the game or the frame. Um, supplement D is your different brackets here um, that to be used. Okay, if you look at the allocation um, form that Kara sent out, it, it gave you um, a description of, of what your brackets could look like. If there are any questions with those at all, please contact me um, so you can get those straightened out and get your brackets looking great. All right, just our brackets. Uh, last but not least, our notes page and our sponsors. Uh, these are the wonderful people who help us um, put on everything that we're putting on here and so on. All right, that is our key points in review here. I am going to attempt to unmute everybody. Uh, and if there's any questions, we can get those addressed. So let's see. Let's see if this does it. All right, I'm pretty sure I unmuted everybody. So you have quite, if you have questions, please ask. Um, if you muted yourself and you have questions, please try to unmute yourself. I'm trying to unmute everybody. I got uh, Katie unmuted, but um, Chrissy and Tanisha, you guys are still muted. So if you guys have questions, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask them. All right, well, then this will wrap up our um, recording of the overview of our district tournament manual. Um, as I showed you earlier, I'm going to scroll all the way back up there. My contact is here. If you guys have any questions concerning prepare, preparations for your tournament or so on, please feel free to contact me, um, and we'll get you guys straightened out. Um, Okay. All right. Well, thank you for joining. Um, I, I can't seem to unmute everybody. So if you guys have any questions or follow up, please be sure to give me, uh, uh, please contact me, please reach out uh, and we'll get this uh, taken care of. Okay. Uh, thank you for joining me um, and have a good night.